bear patch and lots of little black flies unfortunately that seem rather fond of epoxy but, um, luckily it skins off very quickly and the flies don't seem to get stuck in it but that is the port side done completely finished now well hi I'm Tony this is SV Tapatia and uh, well, I'm here in the workshop right now but um, we started off this week as you just saw um, showing you a bit of, of the epoxy primer sealer that I've been preparing on the boat up at the yard the weather and you might hear it now it's raining it's windy it's horrible it's been like that basically all week well windy all week with with showers and and uh, it's not been ideal painting weather really so I've had to work between the weather and of course the boat's an hour and a half drive from here so uh, you know I've been keeping a close eye on the weather forecast and trying to work out when the best time to be up there when to make best use of time here so there have been a couple of things i've been doing in the in the workshop here one was to um to prepare the rubbing strake i bought this vetus rubber or sort of sort of rubber rubbing strake uh, to fit around where i had those black locust pieces around the the shear of the boat and uh i wanted to prepare that it came in a 20 meter roll so first Thing we did was to cut it all as this into four sections there's the actual strake and then there's a trim that goes around so both pieces were 20 meters I wanted to cut that into four pieces of 10 meters for each side uh, so two pieces of the strake one for each side and two pieces of the trim and then the strake part needed preparing with with holes drilled into it and I decided to tr screw it on every 20 centimeters with a screw a crosshead screw I would have preferred another head but that's all I could get in in 316 stainless uh, with a big washer on it and uh, screw that on with one every 20 centimeters along the length of the boat so uh, I say we cut that and prepped it with the holes and to do that I just simply I had a bit of board and I just marked out the 20 centimeters a line on that and then just just slid the strake through as I drilled the holes
one. So there's been a couple of jobs I could do at home this week and uh, one was to make up some wedges for the mast partners, the mast wedges. And the way I've designed it is, is that the mast fitting is a stainless tube with a 216 millimeter internal diameter, internal diameter. The masts are about 204 millimeter diameter so um, we should have 12 millimeter difference, i.e. six millimeter gap all the way around. It's a very, very thin mast wedges that I need. They're just, just filling in that very small six millimeter gap. Uh, so I've got some six mil ply and uh, just wanted to make up some pieces that in, and not strictly speaking wedges, but mast, what do we call them? Spacers that, uh, that take up that bit of ply and, the other, and secure the mast in position.
So there's a bundle of mast wedges. I've got 24 in total. And uh, they just need a little once over the sander. We've got this lip where it will sit down. In fact, so this is a piece of the tubing that the mast fittings are made out of, the partners fittings. And these are designed to go in there yeah, like that between the mast and the, the fitting and uh, sit in there like that and they should do the job nicely all the way around obviously so we've got 24 of them so 12 for each uh, for each mast They look very splendid actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, eleven, twelve. Yeah, a little bit of a gap between them, so should be able to get them in okay. And obviously, a mast boot will clamp around the mast, fold down over the mast fitting, the partner's fitting, so it's all nicely waterproof. Yeah, they look good. And according to my calculations, they're the right thickness. <laughs> we'll find out. Well, as you see, I did actually get 12 in there and they fit in there beautifully. We'll see whether, when the mask's in there, whether I'll get 11 or 12 around there. But um, looks good with 12, I think, hopeful. Well, up at the boat again. Uh, it's very, very, it's windy and rainy and certainly not the sort of weather that you want to be doing painting outside on the hull. But what I am doing is preparing the wiring for the solar panels. I've installed the deck plug and that's the plug that plugs into the plug. Well, that's the plug and the thing on the deck's a socket really, but anyhow. And I've got this five core tinned wire here that I'm gonna to wire to that runs up to a junction box under the bimini and then it's going to split off to the wire to the panels there i've got two controllers so the four panels will be in two banks of two um in parallel and uh can wire it up Where's my device? so i can see what i'm doing yes Well, the, um, my four panels add up to, I've got two 60s and two 40 watt panels. So uh, clearly that's 200 watts, quite clearly. Um, and they run at, their operating voltage is a bit over 40 volts. So um, 40 volts, we've got a total of five amps clearly when they're operating at their maximum. And that's split into two feed wires, so uh, two and a half amps maximum per feed. So um, the wire doesn't need to be particularly heavy gauge to carry that sort of current. Um, so I've got some fairly light wire tinned here, as I say. And uh, that should be plenty. Of course, once they, they reach the controllers, it's then stepped down to 12 volts and then the amperage goes up accordingly. And the wiring from there to the battery connections, of course, is that bit, that much bigger. But um, um, for these sort of small solar power installations, you don't need massively thick wire. So let's see what we've got here. Uh, 
there it is quite a good connector this five pin connector and I'm only using four pins but uh, yeah that's that end wired up and now <laughs> I've got to because I didn't make any notes of how I wired it up when I wired up the plug so I'm now going to plug this in uh, run it down in here and with a with a multimeter just check which color is connected to what so the trick now is to see where we've got continuity down to the two solar controllers there Let's see what we've got let's set the camera up over here somewhere in the hope that we might see something we'll see whether we do and i've got my ends here because they're all well, dangling in the way perhaps i can come around there like that can i keep it out of the way a bit good set this on to ohms i'm sure you know how this works check that it says zero it does good and then see what we've got here oh, i'm going to need to see the meter that's down here yellow is starboard whatever that is starboard positive yellow time for a new notebook solar yellow equals starboard positive and onwards Let's see what red is. There's the black one. There it is. Red is port positive. Red is port positive. Black is native. Was it white the other negative? It must have been white, wasn't it? Yellow and red are the positives. White's the other negative and white. There we are from the, if I get my hand out right, there's the deck plug there. Oh, it's white, it's very windy. Wired up to a junction box there, look, with the five core. And then we're gonna split into two cores after that. That's the cabling. Kerry's here and what are you looking at Kerry? Looking at this awesome stove of sorts. Yeah. Which burns um, spirits. Yeah, methylated spirits or alcohol I suppose. And we've just filled the tank and apparently there's some dripping out into the pre-warming bowl there. And you say you see some drips, don't you, Kerry? Yeah, yeah, there's drips. And then we've got to wait until that's half full. I don't know how we judge half full. <laughs> then we shut the valve. The valve is here at the front. It's under that thing, the way it fits on the Dickinson. Shut that. Then we light the stuff in the in the tray. That's it, the pre-warm tray. That's the correct word, isn't it? And then when that's nearly gone out, we open the valve and our burner should burn. So. It's a cool looking thing and for you know for hot climates it's perfect on top of the Dickinson there. We hope it works. So we're at this somewhere around the half full. It's not quite level with the truth. Yeah, because well, the boat's all on, on, on the lean, isn't it? So we're gonna shut this valve now. And then light it up with my very delicate lighter here. <laughs> All right, now we let that burn till it's nearly out without putting our hair over the top of it, of course, because... Oh, it's burning pretty well, isn't it? And of course, if you filled it too full and it all ran over there, then your entire boat would be on fire, wouldn't it? <laughs> so that's what we want to avoid, most certainly. <coughs> In fact, a person could wedge something under the front of there to sort of level it up a bit. Let's see what happens. Uh, 
that's quite impressive isn't it and also a little bit scary in your boat i feel the yeah. heat all the way up the top it gets to about here doesn't it so yeah. that flame so i'm going to put the kettle on in a bit so i put a bit of water in the kettle while it's burning down and pre-warming Really and truly, you might as well stick the stick a kettle on there, mightn't you? You can't see it then. I see the flames. That's true. Pretty. That stops you heating the top of the boat, and I can see the flames down there. Once that's nearly out, then we're supposed to light, open the valve, and it should light. We hope. Shall I open the valve? Smoking. Uh, it's probably my yeah. filthy kettle. About three turns. It is. Oh, yeah. Gone out. Flames. Is it flames? Oh, yeah. it's burning. Whoa. So, scratch your camera. And can you see those flames? You, I think you can, can't you? Yeah, blue flames. Yeah. Uh, Okay, stick the kettle down again. See how long that takes to boil the kettle? That would be interesting. So we had our kettle run for about five minutes, let's say, and it didn't, well, it didn't get warm really. So we let it run another 10 minutes. It started to get there. Then after about 20 minutes, I think we called it and thought, well, that thing just doesn't do it. It's kind of shit. But it turned out that it actually made some reasonably hot water. And it was, <laughs> can see steam. Yeah, exactly. A nice yeah. cup of tea. So not too yeah. bad, actually. No, no. And if I messed around with it and turned it off. So if I hadn't messed around with it and we'd have stuck with it, it yeah. would have boiled. It would have boiled, it? probably. Yeah. yeah, about 20 minutes, probably. But yeah. So not exactly quick. But... Well, let me just be clear about my motivation on that stove. And, and uh, because in these climates, Certainly, I don't need another stove in the boat. The Dickinson will, will be splendid. Um, but one thing I was thinking of really was, was Hazel. And they do that, that stove that I bought is a single burner version, but they do a double burner version. And Hazel it has a little gas stove in her boat, which actually I made for her. But, um, and it runs on those screw-on bottles. And, and they're fairly expensive. And, and they're not always possible to get them in everywhere so i was sort of when i saw that stove i thought it might be a possibility the double ring burner one might be a possibility for her but no nah. <laughs> firstly i really don't like that big open flame that's just asking for trouble that's a problem waiting to happen a very bad problem and secondly it's it's very slow very slow it took us 20 minutes to boil was that not even well a bit over half a liter of water in the kettle no so that's going to be sent back <laughs> that is not the answer for either of us he's going back so, yeah. this is the rubbing stroke we've got and it's this it's vetus sort of rubbery sort of stuff uh, it's not real rubber it's anyhow, rubbery stuff elastomer of some sort We've got that profile that we screw, and what we screw to the boat, what we noticed is that, um, I didn't know it straight away, but you've got this lip there. See that lip on one side more than the other side? And uh, we're putting that under the uh, under the bottom of the wooden rub rail that I've got on there. So that if you just put it on the flat and it's screwed in, that will close right up. So that's what we're doing, and then fitting that, and then this trim goes into it, and theoretically you just hammer it in, and indeed once you hammer it in the right direction, the trick is to get the bottom in and then hammer it down, and then it goes in. So that's what we're fitting, and we're screwing it on every 20 centimeters. We're putting the screw through. It's hard work, but it's going. Yes. 
missed it. Is that on fast? Warm when the sun's out. Mm. It's not perfect, and that's mainly because the width of my wood is a bit irregular, I think. But it's, I'm very, very happy with that as a rubbing stroke, and it's really good. Yeah, it's all right, isn't it? and certainly will do the job. Well, there we go, that's it for this week. Thank you for watching. As always, my thanks go out to the lovely people who support us on Patreon and via PayPal. And if you'd like to to support the project, the making of the videos. Patreon is a great way to do it uh, from as little as $1 a month. Or in the video description, there's a link to the PayPal me thing. Um, we'll be back, of course. Hopefully, hopefully the weather's gonna get a bit better. I can get up there and get the, the vinyl uh, bonding coat on and then get on to, actually I want to put a coat of blue on the top sides and then the vinyl and then get the antifoul on. Got the prop and the anodes, but those shouldn't be big jobs. And then we're basically ready to launch. I've got the solar panels up at the boat now. I want to actually get them fitted um, between times. But, but I say the, the vinyl, the coat of blue on the top sides, the vinyl, the antifoul, the prop, and the anodes are the things that are actually waiting to be done before launch. Get in there. See you next time. Bye. Thank you.